Now that we've finished drawing and specifying the simple gas plant, let's take a look at the questions. The first question asks for the overall molecular weight for the feed. Since this is a property of the feed stream, stream number one, we will double click on the stream. The molecular weight is found here on the properties tab. It is almost exactly 27 pounds per pound mole. The second question asks about the compressor brake power, discharge temperature, and head. The brake power and head are both properties of the compressor, so we can double click on the compressor and look on its process data tab. The brake power is 517.9 horsepower. You can verify that this property is definitely the brake power by right clicking on the property and selecting what's this. The polytropic head of the compressor is 30,295 feet. The third part of the question asks about the discharge temperature. This is actually a property of the outlet stream, and so we should look at the stream for the information. You can hover over the stream to see that the temperature is 222.5 degrees Fahrenheit. The third question asks about the log mean temperature difference in the first cross exchanger, which is found on the process data tab of the heat exchanger. Once on this tab, you must look at the heat transfer grouping option over here. The LMTD is 49.9 degrees Fahrenheit. The question also asks about the sales gas temperature. You can again close this dialog and look at the outlet stream. Alternatively, all blocks show the information of streams connected to them in the Streams tab. I can see from here that the sales gas temperature is exactly 80 degrees. Question number four asks what the duty required for the refrigeration unit is. This is the C3 refrigeration exchanger, and the duty required can be found to be 445,028 BTUs per hour by hovering over either the exchanger or the duty stream. Notice that the sign of the duty is different between the two methods. The heat exchanger considers the system as the heat exchanger, and energy is being removed, thus a negative sign. The stream considers the value of the energy and the direction of the energy stream. Since the arrow is facing away from the exchanger, the positive duty is being removed from the exchanger, following the direction of the arrow. The fifth question asks for the discharge temperature of the valve. The temperature of the stream exiting from the valve is negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Question 6 asks for the barrels of liquid produced each day and the cubic feet of gas produced each day. The liquid stream is the LPG stream. Double clicking on the stream, we can see that the standard liquid volumetric flow is 15.2 standard gallons per minute. If we click on the units field, we can change the units this information is displayed in. If I change this to barrels per day, I see that the production is 522.1 barrels per day. Pressing delete on the units box will return the value to its default set. The sales gas can be accessed here from the left-hand menu, and it shows to have a standard vapor volumetric flow of 4.3 million standard cubic feet per day. You can also see alternative units by hovering over each of the individual properties. The next question asks for a phase diagram for the sales gas stream. If we select the Analyses tab, we can add a new analysis. Choose Phase Envelope and OK. Then Solve, and we can look at the plot. The default phase envelope calculates and displays the bubble and dew point curves, exactly as the question requested. You can use the information from the Tables tab if you would prefer to generate your own plot using Excel or another program. Question 8 then asks for us to add the 90% and 10% quality lines to the plot. Back on the Conditions tab is the option of a minimum and maximum mole fraction vapor setting. Promax will always plot matching curves, and wishes to only be told the upper half value of the curve. Thus, setting a 90% line will automatically also generate a 10% curve. If I replot this, you can now see that the 90 and 10 curves have been added to the bubble and dew point curves. The next question asks about some critical information on the stream. This is found in the same analysis, back on the Conditions tab. The critical point is 1238.4 PSIA, and negative 9.7 degrees Fahrenheit. This point can be seen on the plot as well. The cricondentherm pressure is 891.4 PSIA. Looking at the plot, you can see that this is the pressure that corresponds to the highest temperature that vapor liquid equilibrium can exist. Question number 10 asks for the read vapor pressure and the true vapor pressure of the liquid product. If we add a new analysis to the LPG stream, we should select the vapor pressure do bubble point option. Select the RVP choice, and then unselect the extraneous options here. Click Solve, and we find that the RVP is 106.167 PSI, and the TVP is 106.675 PSIG. 
The last question then asks what pipe size is required for the inlet stream. Let's add a line sizing analysis to the inlet. We are asked to maintain a pressure drop less than 5 psi per 100 feet of horizontal length. We type that into the first blank. We can then select a Schedule 40 pipe and click Solve. This calculates that we need a 3 inch pipe. The pressure drop is actually 4.89 pounds per 100 feet and the velocity is 82 feet per second. It then gives a warning message that we are greater than the erosional velocity. If we choose to limit the velocity to 50 feet per second, resolve the sizing analysis, the new required size is a 4 inch pipe. Promax also gives us the warning stating that it is the velocity requirement that is limiting the size required from the pipeline.